We are KUAM, and this is the hot spot, and you are on that camera, evidently. And if you were watching us on the wide shot um, during the commercial break, you know that my good friend Denise Mendiola is here, and we were just having a ball. You couldn't hear it, but we were talking about all sorts of things. Uh, apparently, the road conditions in your home village of Chalampago. Uh, we were talking about educational opportunities, and more importantly, some of the boot camps that are coming up with uh, you fine folks over at GCC. I've had you on the show, Denise, many, many times talking about the boot camps. This fall is going to be chock full of them, I must say. A very, very Definitely. impressive release you guys put out. Yes, we are slated to be super busy for the rest of this year. That's a good problem. So, yeah, we'll be, uh, I'll see you next year. Okay. <laughs> so those lunch plans, we, we always have those, those long standing, not We're happening. We're going to try this again in 2023. Okay. Three. Well, well yeah. to be fair, I've got the election thing coming up. Oh, so. that's true. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. good luck to you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. We'll, we'll order. We'll order on Uno Go, and then we'll just like have lunch <laughs> right. on Zoom. Yeah. Right. That's probably. This is the nature of, of, of socializing in the year 2022, anyway. <laughs> okay. Well, but I guess it is. It is kind of like I mean, it is. Is it is a social experience? And I'm not saying that you mm. know pejoratively about these boot camps because not only do you get to skill up or you know learn a new trade it's something that's very very valuable that will take you onto a new stage in your career it's also the ability to network and to uh to work with you know learned professionals who are going to get you to that next level but also other people that are now going to be your colleagues right oh absolutely mm -hmm. it's such a unique experience for someone to go through a short-term training where they get out of their comfort zone they leave the industry that they know or enter into a whole new career field that they wouldn't have thought of doing mm -hmm. and so the pandemic really redefined what people think of when they think of careers and and how to be successful in their life mm. knowing that these things can happen again so um, gcc responded by creating some new kind of training opportunities based on what the employers were asking for i was going to say this is demand based so Absolutely. all the boot camps that you were having are, are i mean it's i don't want to say guaranteed job placement but all every all, every one of the boot camps that you would have is all based on what's going on right now in industry and you're going to get picked up immediately. Absolutely. Yeah. And right now, these employers are looking for people that have at least a basic set of skills mm -hmm. that can help them contribute to their organization, right? So definitely in the field of ship repair, that's that's a hot, you know, um, thing we're talking about right now mm -hmm. with the transportation industry. So we're focusing a lot on the transportation industry um, with truck driving, bus driving, uh, ship repair, uh, you name it. Anything I, that I right. honest, honestly, I want to take the bus driving one. I've I've always aspired to be like like a like a, a, bus, a, a bus driver or like one of those <laughs> one of those like truck drivers. Really? Remember when we used to see those those commercials on like network TV? Uh huh. Hi, I'm Debbie Dutson. I, I believe in you know. I'll, I'll teach you how to be a truck driver. I I didn't watch that channel. Oh okay. But whatever you were watching, I'm yeah. sure it was really. But good. I mean, you know, our population is going to expand here. You know, Absolutely. with the increase and and so with it specifically with this uh, the bus driving boot camp, Denise, is this just for uh, like DOE bus drivers and for um, Guam Mass Transit mm. authorities, or is it also branching out to like in private industry with like the tour companies? Mm -hmm. So we do have a huge need right now for bus drivers at DPW that will be driving our school kids around. Mm. That's a that's a big one right now. And then we also have GRTA that's positioned. They have buses coming in, so they also have a huge need for drivers to get to those routes. Those are going to be electric too, right? Yeah. So it's, it's yes. even for people that are in the industry right yeah. now, whole new industry. Yeah, the technology is changing. Yeah. And, and so imagine the people that have to be skilled up in that area mm -hmm. to know how to drive those types of vehicles. And then we also have folks in the private industry. So Kloppenberg, who's been a great partner. Oh, yeah. We also have Lam Lam Tours that are coming in. Shout so, out to Brad yeah. Kloppenberg, my former, my former classmate. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're older yeah. than he is, actually, but we have the same math class at Sanchez. Yeah, no, they, they're great people. So we, you know, every time there's an opportunity that comes up, they always step up and they help with instructors. Um, they have uh, mentors and, and things like that. So it's a cross between government and private sector. Mm -hmm. Okay, I want to ask you something, Denise, and please don't, please don't. I ring. see that smile on your face, Jason. Please, okay, yeah, you know, you know, <laughs> you know how I tend to be, right? Throw something heavy at me, right? If I if I get this one, but j just don't hurt my laptop. Not literally. This is, this okay. is my, no, this is my baby, right? Okay. Um, these boot camps, right? They're very, very concentrated, and you even said, and you've educated like our, mm -hmm. our viewers that you know you want to take time, you know, away from what you might be doing because I mean they're very, very focused, they're very concentrated, they're very intense, right? Right. Um, as the program administrator, I know you're looking also at retention mm -hmm. um, and and people being able to actually apply and remember all of that information in such a compressed time span. Um, how effective are these you know to, to learn that much information mm. in that amount of time that's a good point um it is very condensed it's very um 
intense. But while they're doing that, they also get on the job training. So it's a combination of lecture, lab, and OJT. So in some boot camps, and, and with the bus spe uh, specifically, mm. uh, the participants are going to be paid as they're going through this training program. Mm. So they do get paid uh, to do the hands-on training, to attend the, the lectures. And at the end, um, they have an opportunity to continue their OJT until they're hired on to the mm. organization. Now, where maybe where some might be concerned with like the amount of retention, because you're taking mm -hmm. in all of that information, and we've got some uh, wonderful images right now of some of the past boot camps. Oh, yeah, that just um, happened recently. Is, wait, is that the medical coding one? Yeah, that was uh, child uh, care. And which is also we're doing Look our at that smile too. I you know, can tell. She's so cute. Um, th it, there's me. So they're doing the child care boot camp three that's starting on Monday. Okay. So that's the third cohort for child care. We also had CNA boot camp that happened. So certified nursing assistant. We have another one that's coming up again. Mm -hmm. So you name it in the medical field, the healthcare field, in transportation. This is where the employers have a huge need. Okay. Yeah. And I was going to say, whereas some might be concerned with the amount of retention given the fact that they're very, very condensed, like you said, mm -hmm. the upside to that is you're getting so much information and practical skills in addition to like classroom theory, mm -hmm. you're gonna get really good really fast. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and you I and I are like old, you know, old school, like <laughs> UOG classmates yeah. and everything where you'd have to like, you know, have, have a long drawn out, you know, theoretical right? framework and everything. Yeah. But, yeah, but you guys are getting people like, qualified and ready to work immediately. Now these are people that are getting a combination of, of you know, they're, they're getting a, a variety of learning methods, right? So they're learning different ways and, and with different styles. So they get to touch it, feel it, you know, they get to hear it, they get mm -hmm. to see it, they get to try it. And so it's just this full um, experience for them. And I think that's what what the formula is for them to be able to get skilled up quickly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we, we've covered uh, we've covered bus driving. Mm -hmm. uh, what else have we got? We have something new that's coming up. It's called mm. small engine repair, and so well, you that, so that's the new baby. Yeah, that's the new baby, <laughs> and this one is happening in September. So they're going to get. Uh, credit courses uh, in small engine repair, heart What savers. exactly is a small engine? Is that like, are we talking about like even like boats and ships or? Yes, okay. boats and sh commercial boats. Commercial grade vehicles? Yeah, okay. boats for sure. Uh, the small engine boats. Um, I'm going to pretend like I know what those are. <laughs> but the, <laughs> so, so the boats the that go in the water. Motors, yes. I <laughs> and then I think also um, like the bush cutting um, okay. equipment, yeah. uh, lawnmowers, you know, anything that's considered small engine. That's yeah, and then you doing. could immediately go out and you could be like like a service tech for like any, any yes. of these like industrial yes. industrial equipment. Yeah, absolutely. So they, they people are hiring for those uh, skilled people right now. And then, you know, somebody can either be hired on or they can also start their own business. Mm -hmm. So that's the nice thing about small engine repair is this is something you can even do at home in your backyard, in your in your garage. Mm -hmm. uh, but better employers are hiring for that okay. right now. I know you I know you appreciate feedback. I do. As long as I've known you, here, here we go <laughs> again. Right? Here's great. that smirk, right? <laughs> Could you consider adding adding a course in locksmithing? I would totally take that. Um, I would, but Andrew would probably kill me. So, <laughs> ah, Andrew okay, Th that's <laughs> that is that is a good reason. But it is, you know, there are a few out there, and it is a good skill. I believe he is actually teaching classes in the states. But that is a good point. Oh, um, okay. It's, it really is a good skill to have. Okay, but for, for the time being and everything like that. So now, small engine repair is mm -hmm. a new one. We got bus driving coming up, and then you have some tried and true, uh, the proven ones, which industry continues to have a need for coming. Right, up. Cabras is still hiring, so we're going to do another Cabras apprenticeship boot camp in this fall. So October is when that's going to start. These folks are vetted in the very beginning and then they're hired on. So they're already employed by Cabras while they're going through the training program. So mm -hmm. imagine that. So they're already employees while they're getting skilled out. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's pretty awesome because they're getting paid. Then they become apprentices and then they go through the apprenticeship track where they still get more of their school paid for. So mm -hmm. complete free ride for them. I mean, free college, you get hired on by a great company. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of feedback, what what are what are some of the comments that students that have been through the program and now they go like directly out into the workforce? Mm -hmm. um, I know you always solicit this kind of thing, and you mm -hmm. know you want you're like tell me what you liked about it, what can we do better, and everything like that. What what right. are some of those conversations? We um we need the feedback all the time because we're always trying to improve on mm -hmm. the training programs, and so biggest room in the world is a room for self improvement. Absolutely, and so we have chats on um on for each boot camp mm -hmm. and we stay on those chats even a year later we we ask the students to stay on the chat and keep in touch with us so they give us feedback all the time mm. and they tell us what worked for them they tell us if they lost their job if they moved to another job 
if they wanted to move to another industry. Mm -hmm. So there's constant feedback back and forth. Then employers come and tell us that they need more people. So we shoot it out to the different chats. We're like, hey, so-and-so's hiring. Who wants to try out for this, you know? Mm. So there's constant communication back and forth with them. So my phone is full of just boot I can't camp even chats. Imagine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hopefully yeah. GCC is covering like your cellular bill. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, that, diff different interview for a different day. It's okay. Day. It's worth it. Okay. What are, what are some of the uh, the most common uh, bits of feedback that come back about what students liked about the about the program and the experience? I think the best thing that the students uh, and the most feedback that we get from them is that they are given this opportunity to learn new skills and for folks that didn't have the financial ability to do it, this was something that was such a gift for them. Mm -hmm. And so they uh, were very appreciative of GCC and the government, you know, the the agencies, the federal funds that come in, the local funds that come in, to give them that opportunity where they wouldn't have been able to do on their own. Yeah, you guys really launched us at, at a very, very, very opportune time, really helping out a lot of people when they desperately needed it. And you know, we're stewards of the money, so we have to make sure that the money is spent, you know, we're fiscally responsible. So that's why we need to make sure you really do, as an employer, you really do need this person or you need this position. And then like, what kind of skills do you need? So we, we help them create it. And then we say, okay, this person's ready for you. So it's a constant um, communication and partnership with our employers. Okay, so even if you're not in the uh, market for a job right now, or you're not looking to skill up at this particular moment, I mean, you always should be, but if, even if that's not your cup of tea right now, where can people find out more information? Because you guys are always adding courses, and I know you guys, always. You, like, your schedule is like already like a year and a half out. Yeah, continuously. Uh, so best thing is to email us, uh, email workforce, at guamcc.edu, mm -hmm. that's the easiest, or call us at 735-5640. Okay, can you give us like a little bit of a sneak peek about what is like further down the road? Because I know, again, you know, this thing is sure. uh, it, like, it's, it's, market, it's market demand based, and you mm -hmm. know, if, if you feel that there is a need or um, industry leaders get back to you and say like, Denise, I really need electricians, I need, mm -hmm. you know, like uh, elevator repairmen or, you know, like the, the people who fix the escalator. Yeah. Those guys are rock stars, by the way. <laughs> I've, I've been on enough broken escalators and you, to know. And you, you, you read the labels, too, to see who it certified it. So I do that, too. I look to see who certified it. See, there you go. Right? I mean, yeah. that's important yeah. because those are people that are skilled and you trust them that you're not going to fall and break your leg mm -hmm. when you're going down an elevator or escalator. Exactly. So, yeah. I, I, yeah. So what are, what are some of the other programs that, that are either on the docket mm -hmm. already or that you might be considering like going forward? We with? have a bunch that are already in the plans. And so one thing you may be interested in is Guam Waterworks Authority. They uh, want to do a water studies program. And so this is something that you would see uh, in California and different states, but we don't have one on Guam. So mm. we're helping them with that to be able to develop a program to get people that are going to work for Waterworks to be able to at least have basic skills in that area. And then for those that are already employed to be able to go through an apprenticeship program so they can level up, make sure that they all have the proper certifications. So that's one. Another one is we're working with the Guam Guard and the Army to be able to help them um, get people uh, to get over some of the barriers so that they can participate in their programs. So things like GED, taking the ASVAB test, learning some new skills so that they're going in I had the colonel here two weeks ago when we were talking about specifically that. Is, okay. is he said, you know, it, it is a little bit of a concern. And, you it know, is. I mean, we had that whole pandemic thing, but, mm -hmm. but the the average ASVAB skill, mm -hmm. I believe, at, at, at public school levels has dipped like a little bit. It has. And so they want to make sure that, you know, when you have uh, young men and women from mm -hmm. the island who make that decision to volunteer mm -hmm. for military service, they want to give them as broad a career exactly. um, range of range of choices as possible. And you know, your ASVAB kind of like determines how wide that will be. Yeah, that's where we come in. So mm -hmm. we help with the ASVAB. Oh, that's what we're working on right now is to help them with the ASVAB. We already have the GED program in place. Mm -hmm. Again, the GED is, a, you know, if you don't have something like that, it's a barrier to employment. So that's where our program comes in to assist people who want to get that. Mm -hmm. uh, we're working with uh, different organizations like Bureau of Women's Affairs to be able to get the ladies to get their GEDs because you know, for whatever reason, they were able to do that when they were in high school. Mm -hmm. So again, uh, I had Jane here several months Did ago who was talking about just that. <laughs> so, yeah. So these are all of our, 
you know, are friends. We and... are spreading the gospel <laughs> Billy Graham style. Like right? we, we are, we are getting the word out because we want to make sure that our that our people are in the best possible yes. position where they can not only be successful but you know take care of their families. Absolutely. You know, you know and and you know contribute to our island economy because that's yeah. what it's really all about. Well, we really thank you, folks, for being out there and being proactive and asking us to come in and share the good news and mm. and you know talk about the things that are available to our people in the community. So um, you know we really appreciate that. Mm. And How about instructors? You know, are you guys in need? Of Absolutely. Second. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. If, there, if there are people out there who are already qualified, or say have you know years and years of experience, or even maybe already retirees, yeah. and they're they're like I'm I'm a master craftsman and everything, I, yeah. I would like to help out. Desperately seeking Susan. So we need <laughs> <laughs> we need instructors in truck for I sure. I actually watched that at the Denver right? Theater. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the matinee. I love that movie. And um, med code and billing. Those are big things that we need to find instructors for because they're so skilled, right? They're yeah. so specific, and our, we have a small community, so. We need that. It would not be an interview with Denise Mendiola if we didn't have some <laughs> some at unbelievably arcane '80s references. Right. <laughs> I, I also watched Who's That Girl with Madonna and uh, and Made to Order with Ali Sheedy. Remember that? Uh, yes. I oh watched it in 1987, a double matinee over you at Dodo Theater. It, it just brings back so many memories. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, hopefully, hopefully we are going to make a, a lot of positive memories with this uh, with yes. this boot camp program. But it is ongoing and everything. So make sure to check out GuamCC.net. Uh, so no. Uh, it's no. <laughs> All right. I need to study. <laughs> email us desperately <laughs> seeking information on uh, my part uh, email workforce at guamcc.edu okay I totally whiffed <laughs> on that one this is why I, I so appreciate Denise this is being why. here yeah ever since UOG we were, we were classmates and everything she's always been correcting me going on like you know 25 right. years and everything but no you, you are doing absolutely fantastic I mean it really is like like the Lord's work that you guys are being able to give people uh, the ability to improve upon themselves and you know like um you know give people choice i think that's the most important thing so denise thank you so much and shout out to the team thank at gcc you. you guys are amazing yes all right you. please stay tuned denise and i are going to wrap up the show and maybe talk more about obscure 80s movies when we come back <laughs> <laughs>